Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'd like to welcome you to the Cream Center for Mindful Living. I'd like to welcome back those of you who are a regular part of our mindfulness community. And I'd like to offer a nice warm welcome to those of you who are new and who are here joining us for the very first time. So just a little bit about us. We are a global nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the benefits of mindfulness, self-compassion, and positive psychology accessible to all. Our goal here at the Crame Center is to help people become more resilient and to live better lives through our various programs. So we'd like to welcome you. Welcome to our three-part resilience workshop on how mindfulness, self-compassion, and positive psychology can increase resilience as well as contribute to overall well-being. I'm Sarah Govea, for those of you who don't know me. I'm a trained and qualified MBSR and MSc teacher. And so before we dive into the heart of this workshop, we'd like to begin with a mindful moment. And this is to allow ourselves to arrive here fully so that we can be present for the workshop ahead. So I'd like to invite you now to take a moment to settle in, right? finding yourself a comfortable seat, whatever that might mean for you in this particular moment. And then there's an invitation to close the eyes or soften the gaze. Right, we're bringing our attention inward. And now take a nice, full, deep breath. And invite a sense of arrival. Really arriving in the space that you're in. Arriving in the chair that you're sitting in. And arriving in your very own body. Maybe even using the contact points, the feet on the floor, the sits bones on the chair, the hands in your lap as a way to further into your own body, as a way to anchor into this particular moment, the right here, right now. And if it's possible, do the very best that you can to let go of whatever it is that came before. And likewise, doing the very best that you can to let go of what will come later. Really giving yourself permission to be here fully. And now as you're ready, bringing your awareness to your breath and just following the rhythm of your own breath cycle. And one breath in and one breath out. Just doing this for the next two or three breaths. Doing this at your very own pace. just allowing the breath to be just as it is. One breath at a time. And after your next breath, just allowing your eyes to gently open bringing your attention back onto the screen in front of you. And I'd like to invite you now just to take a moment and notice how you are in this moment. And how do you feel after participating in this mindful moment exercise? Okay. All right, so today is our second workshop and it's on the topic of self-compassion. We're gonna talk specifically about the important role that self-compassion plays in becoming more resilient. We're going to learn what self-compassion is and then we're going to end this workshop with a practice, something that's easy to implement into your day-to-day -day life. So in the first workshop that we had, we focused on the topic of mindfulness, right? And we talked specifically about how it increases our awareness. 
And when we are aware of what is happening as it is happening, we can recognize when we're facing a difficulty or when we need to change a situation that we're in. And when we recognize that we're experiencing a challenging moment, it's important that we learn how to offer ourselves self-compassion. So we'd like to start with a brief reflection that might shine light on your very own level of self-compassion. So I'd like to invite you again, if it feels right, to close your eyes or perhaps soften your gaze, right? bringing the attention inward once again. And think about a time when a close friend of yours, a dear friend, was struggling or suffering in some way. Maybe your friend had a misfortune. Perhaps they failed at something or maybe they felt inadequate. So just calling such a situation to mind. And now reflecting on how did you respond to your friend in this situation? What did you say? What tone of voice did you use, right? How did you say it? What nonverbal gestures did you use? Just taking a moment to sit with and reflect on this. And now I'd like to invite you to imagine yourself in the exact same situation putting yourself in your friend's shoes. And how would you respond to yourself in this situation? What would you say to yourself? How would you say it? What would your tone be like? How about your posture? Your nonverbal gestures? Again, taking a moment to sit with and reflect on this seeing what comes up. And now I'd like to invite you to reflect on if there's any difference in how you treat a dear friend compared to how you treat yourself. Is there a difference there? And if there is, do you notice a pattern in how you treat yourself? Just taking some time with this. And as many of us may come to see, it's fairly common that we treat others more kindly and compassionately than we treat ourselves. So what is self-compassion? Self-compassion entails being warm and understanding toward ourselves when we suffer, fail, or feel inadequate, rather than ignoring our pain or punishing ourselves with self-criticism. So self-compassion really is about treating ourselves with the same kindness that we would treat a good friend when things go wrong. And I'd like to highlight that if this isn't how you typically treat yourself, not to worry because self-compassion is a skill. It's a skill that we can learn. I think that's one of the beauties of it. So compassion is noticing that someone is suffering. It's feeling moved by this person's suffering and then responding to this person's pain with a sense of warmth, caring, and a desire to help this person in some way. And self-compassion involves making a U-turn. We like to say a Y-O-U turn and directing that same compassion that you would toward another person toward yourself. And studies show that people who motivate themselves with self-compassion are actually more likely to achieve their goals. They're more likely to stick to healthy routines, to stick with healthy habits than those who motivate themselves with self-criticism. According to Kristen Neff's groundbreaking research, there are three components to what she calls mindful self-compassion, and we're going to touch upon them now. So these three components are mindfulness, common humanity, and self-kindness. 
So the first of these, mindfulness, right? We talked about mindfulness in our last workshop. And as it relates to self-compassion, mindfulness allows us to recognize when we're struggling or suffering in some way, right? It's an awareness that we're hurting. And in order to do something about it, we need to first recognize it. And then the second piece, common humanity. This is acknowledging that struggling and suffering is part of the human experience. And so although we suffer, although we struggle for different reasons and to varying degrees, we all suffer at one point or another in life. Unfortunately, that's an inevitable part of the human experience. It's just part of being human. And then this last component, self-kindness. This involves being warm and understanding toward ourselves when we suffer, fail, or feel inadequate. It's really about bringing the sense of kindness, this sense of caring and comfort toward ourselves. So now that we've talked a little bit about what self-compassion is, we're going to take a moment now to talk about some obstacles to self-compassion. To begin with, we're going to investigate what we call the inner critic, right? And we can do this by investigating how it is we speak to ourselves, just as we did in the previous exercise, how do you treat a friend? And so one of the main ways that we sabotage our own levels of self-compassion is through this voice in our head that's called the inner critic. And unfortunately, we all have one. So usually we experience the inner critic because it's trying to keep us safe in some way, right? Our inner critic is trying to protect us from a perceived danger, or it's trying to help us succeed, even if the methods that it's using are harsh or unproductive, and typically they are. It's important to note here and highlight that there is a difference between harsh self-criticism and critical discernment. And we're going to take a moment to touch upon the distinction now. So critical discernment can be a motivator that allows us to learn from our mistakes or to benefit from an observation. So I'm going to offer an example here. So for instance, maybe we recognize that we've stayed up too late, right? And we need to be well rested for a presentation that we have tomorrow. So we're therefore motivated to get to bed, right, to get the rest that we need so that we can perform at our best, so that we can succeed, right? This discerning inner critic serves a function, right? This discerning inner critic is protecting us from harm or failing. But an overly aggressive inner critic or this mean inner critic that we sometimes have can unfortunately do the opposite. Sometimes it can be the source of harm. So the difference between the harsh inner critic and critical discernment is in the tone of voice and the choice of words that we use with ourselves. So our tone matters, our tone's important and our words matter, our words are important. A harsh tone and disparaging words can send us into this fight, flight, or freeze, right? This stress response. And we all know that it can be generally unproductive. And unfortunately, at times, it can even be debilitating. However, a more caring and discerning tone has the ability to tap into our mammalian caregiving system. And it's a positive motivator that can yield much better results. So let's take a moment now just to reflect, right? Do you have an inner critic that calls you names like idiot or dummy or stupid? Um, maybe it says things like, oh, you messed up again, or you can't get anything right, right? And if this is the case, it can be really helpful to name your inner critic, right? So when you hear that inner critical voice, right? When it arises in your mind, you can name it, right? Your response might sound something like this, not today nagging Nelly, or go away berating Bobby, or move over me Miguel, or cut it out critical Catherine, or stop it sneering Sarah, right? The, the personification of your inner critic can be helpful because it draws attention to the unhealthy way in which we speak to ourselves. There's a fantastic expression. I love this expression. It's by Dan Siegel. And the expression is name it to tame it. 
right? So by naming our inner critic, we begin to take away its power. And this could be the very first step in changing our inner dialogue. It can be the very first step toward becoming more self-compassionate. So now that we've talked a little bit about what self-compassion is, a little bit about some a, a little bit about some of the obstacles there can be to being self-compassionate, we're going to move into an exercise which can increase our levels of self-compassion. So we're going to move into an exercise that's known as the self-compassion break. This self-compassion break practice is based on the research of Dr. Dr. Kristen Neff and Dr. Christopher Germer. And the beauty of this practice is that it can be done in a moment of difficulty, right? It can be done in a brief minute or two. It can even be done as quickly as in a, a couple of seconds. But today, for the sake of this exercise and for learning this exercise, we're going to be doing this as a reflective meditation. And once you become familiar with it, again, you can do it in a moment or two. And before we move into this practice, before we transition into this reflective meditation, I'd like to introduce you to something known as soothing and supportive touch. So we all know, right, we cannot deny the importance of touch. Touch has a physiological effect, right? It activates the mammalian caregiving system. Touch releases oxytocin, right? This feel-good hormone. And your own touch can be soothing and highly effective. So we're going to practice this now. Um, I'd like to mention that it may feel a little bit strange at first if we've never done this before. But I'd like to encourage you to bring this open mind, right? To try it on for size and see how it feels, right? Know that at any point in time, you can release the touch. So we're going to take a moment now to find a soothing and supportive touch that might feel right as we move into this practice. So the first of these I'd like to offer is a hand over the heart. This is my own personal favorite. Perhaps it feels nice to put two hands over the heart. Maybe it's the hand on the heart and one on the belly. Maybe it's cradling your arms, right? Giving yourself this nice hug. Perhaps it's placing your hands on your cheeks. It's even just one hand on the cheek. Maybe it's one hand on the shoulder. So I'd like to invite you to find one that feels comfortable to you. Know that you can take the time to explore this further at another point in time. And now I'd like to invite you to find yourself a comfortable seat as we move into this reflective meditation. By doing whatever it is that you need to feel comfortable. And then there's an invitation to close your eyes or soften the gaze. Right, settling into the body. Coming home to the body once again. And just gently bringing an awareness to your breath. Just simply noticing the breath coming in and out of your own body. And now as you're ready, I'd like to invite you to think of a situation in your life right now that is difficult. So choosing something that's causing you stress. Perhaps it's a health problem. Maybe it's a problem in an important relationship. Maybe it's a problem at work or a situation with a difficult neighbor. As you call something to mind, 
please choose something that's in the mild to moderate range. So not choosing a large problem. We don't wanna overwhelm ourselves when we're first learning the skill of self-compassion. And choosing something that's manageable that we can work with together. Once you have something in mind, I'd like to invite you to recall as many details as possible about this particular situation or this particular problem. And as you're continuing to recall these details, also take note of your own internal dialogue. So what are you saying to yourself as it relates to this problem? And what's your tone of voice like? Are you blaming yourself? And just reflecting on this. Really allowing yourself to see, hear, and feel your way into the problem. Maybe as you do this, you notice, you sense some uneasiness in your body. And if this is the case, where do you feel this uneasiness in the body? Where can it be felt? Making contact with the discomfort that you feel, whether that's a tightness in the chest, a heaviness of the heart, pain in the stomach, or tension anywhere else in the body. And then say to yourself slowly and clearly, this is a moment of suffering, or this is stressful, or this hurts. Or, ouch, this does not feel good. And next, say to yourself again slowly and clearly, suffering is a part of living. Or, I'm not alone. Others would feel a lot like me in this particular situation. So remembering that struggling, suffering, it's all part of the human experience. And now placing a hand over your heart or place on the body that feels supportive, that feels soothing. And then taking a moment to notice, to feel the warmth of your very own touch. Sensing into the contact of the hand or hands. You supporting you. And then saying to yourself, may I be kind to myself? Or you got this. Or may I give myself what I need? Or maybe it's, may I care tenderly for myself in this moment? Or perhaps it's, 
May I have the courage and strength that I need to make a change. If you're having any difficulty finding the right words, just imagine that a dear friend of yours or a loved one is having the same exact problem as you. And what would you say to this person heart to heart without giving advice? If your friend were to hold just a few of your words in their mind, what would you like them to be? What message would you like to deliver? And now, can you offer the same message to yourself? Can you offer yourself the same words of kindness? Just taking some time to do so now. Trying these words on for size. And then just gently releasing the practice, taking a few moments to rest in your own experience, allowing it to be however it was and allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to be however you are right now. And you might have noticed that this practice incorporates the three components of self-compassion. Right. The first thing that we did was mindfulness, where we brought an awareness to a difficulty that we're experiencing. And then the second component of common humanity, right? This is when we acknowledge that we're not alone, that others might feel the same way or others have dealt with something similar. And then that last and final component of self-kindness, right? This is where we brought encouraging words toward ourselves or offered supportive phrases, maybe even that soothing and supportive touch. So again, we did this as a reflective meditation, but this exercise is beautiful because it's something that can be done so easily in daily life. It can be done within moments. It might be as simple as offering yourself a soothing or supportive touch or words of encouragement, like you got this, I have your own back, I have my own back, Um, and it may be both. So, We just want to take a moment now to say thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your practice and participation. Um, It was so wonderful to be with all of you. It truly was.